Mix TV presents the Southeast Tennessee Sports Show. Presented by Check Into Cash, your one stop money shop. Also by Hardee's. Hardee's tastes like America. Now it's time for your local sports highlights and interviews with your host, Pat Benson. Hello and welcome to the Mix 104.1 Southeast Tennessee Sports Show, brought to you by Hardee's and Check Into Cash. I am your host, Pat Vincent, and as always, we've got a lot to get you caught up on from our local sports this week. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and dive right into our Hardy scoreboard. All right, so last Friday, September 11th, Bradley Central hosted Bearden, and they took home the W, 35-20. Shout out to the Bears. Meanwhile, Cleveland took care of business in Saudi Daisy with an impressive 41-14 victory. Red Bank defeated East Hamilton 27-24, McMinn Central beat Polk County 47-14, and McMinn County laid it on Oodawalk 56-14, and of course Walker Valley had a bye week last week. Same day girls soccer, Boy Buchanan shut out Bradley Central 5-0. Then last weekend, Saturday, September 12th, up in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, we had the Showdown in the Mountains Part 2 at Rocky Top Sports World. Bradley Central had four matches. They lost three of them. Uh, the first one was to T.L. Hanna of South Carolina, 2-0. The second one was to Signal Mountain, which they lost 2-1. They lost to Dobbins Bennett, 2-0. And then they turned around and beat Livingston Academy, 2-0. Meanwhile, Cleveland had three matches. They won one of them. The first one was against Concord Christian, which they lost 2-0. They turned around and beat Gordon Lee of Georgia 2-1. Meanwhile, they lost to Sullivan Central 2-1. So, we are going to take a quick commercial break, and then we are going to talk to some of our, uh, our local soccer players out of Bradley Central. We'll be right back. You are watching the Southeast Tennessee Sports Show, presented by Check Into Cash and Hardee's. Uh, we're here with Coach Edwards of Bradley Central Girls uh, Soccer. All right, Coach, uh, I know it was a crazy off season for y'all. Could you describe the process for what it looked like for y'all? Um, throughout the summer, we were able to condition a little bit in our groups of 10 and less. Um, so we took advantage of that, of that as much as we could. Um, and then, of course, we missed things like team camp and uh, like overnight camp and stuff we got to enjoy as a team. But um, uh, through July, and into August, we were able to, after dead period, we were able to come back and pretty much go as a team. Um, and it was just a little bit different, but we, we made it work and we, we really had to take advantage of what we could, what we could do. Yeah, uh, get us caught up on what the seasons looked like for y'all so far, since y'all begun. Um, so far we've played what, um, last week we finished, or we competed in the Cleveland Classic um, played some really great competitive Chattanooga teams. Um, we did well. We had good performances, and uh, we improved each game. And so we we took away from that, um, just getting better every day. Uh, let's see. We played one district game. Um, we lost a, a good McMahon team. Um, and that's, that's really – we've had one other home game. And so it's been pretty uh, low-key, but we're starting to get into the thick of it this upcoming week. That's awesome. What's the main difference between last year's squad and this year's team? Um, I think a lot of um, this year's team has um, been just like the unity of our senior class. We have a large senior class again, like last year we had a pretty big senior class, but as a whole, I think our seniors have really um, stepped up as a team and led really well. We had, we had some like standouts last year that could, um, just play key roles for us. But as far as these girls go, they all work together as a team and just um, really play united, I think. That's awesome. Uh, what are your goals for this year's team? What do you think they're capable of? Um, I definitely think we are capable of being um, in in the district tournament and like going going far. I hope we are at least. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, and that's what they want to do and maybe get into the region play. Um, and so... I think they're plenty capable of being able to do that. 
All right, cool. Last question for you. Um, I know you're a teacher first and a coach second. Are there any life lessons or anything that you try to pass on to your student athletes? Gosh, um, I try to, you know, emphasize just being a good human. I think a lot of coaches um, do that. And uh, our assistant coach, Coach Rodriguez, he actually has um, implemented a little, I don't know, like a spotlight kind of thing about being a Wonder Woman and how you know, we spotlight players after each game about being the best that they can be and who's the wonder woman of that game. And so they have to do a little spin and everything. And so <laughs> just doing the best that you can and, you know, being uh, confident in yourself and doing what you can do. That, that's so cool. All right. I got some questions now for Abby Scalise, Jayla Reinhardt. All right. I'm going to ask the same question and then hopefully you both can answer the same question. Um, what did you do this summer to try to stay in shape? I know, like Coach said, you couldn't do your normal routine. So what did it look like? Um, how was it different? Um, it was different. Um, we had to do, like, groups of 10. Like, it wasn't um, a team, which was kind of weird because, like, we're always used to being together as a team. But, like, I feel like it kind of gave us a chance to be closer and get to know people personally. And so that's one thing this year, like we are so close this year as a team, like it's just more of a family than anything. And like, I love these girls more than anything. So hopefully it's going to be really good this year. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I mean, I would honestly say the same thing. It's been difficult not being able to like all be together, you know, playing side by side, you know, it's been, it was tough in the beginning, definitely because you know, we had all the time last season, we had team bonding and sleepovers and like all these things that we got to do then. And then with all this COVID stuff, we weren't able to. So that was a little bit harder than, you know, before, but, you know, we've made it work. We've been able to, you know, get together, like with the groups of 10, we were able to connect with the people that were in those groups and really have a good bond with those girls. And, now that we're all back together, you know, still having those boundaries and those guidelines that we follow, you know, it's it's been a little bit difficult, but, you know, we've been making it work for sure. That's awesome. All right, so I know y'all faced a killer schedule so far. Where are some areas that uh, you feel like y'all can improve upon? <laughs> um, I think right now we're improving tremendously already like um just getting our heads up getting passes off like communication is great like we are already on the climb right now so i don't know we're gonna hopefully be good yeah <laughs> i mean pretty much the same thing just we've been improving on a lot of stuff losing a lot of players and gaining yeah. a lot of players we've had to you know, learn new names and learn, you know, the different strengths and weaknesses of each girl that have, you know, come onto the team. So that's been, that's been, you know, it hasn't been hard, but I mean, it's been one of those things where we've had to learn and kind of adapt to it, you know, meeting new girls and losing, you know, the, all the seniors that we had last season. So, but I mean, I think we really are improving a lot and adjusting to the new changes. That's awesome. That actually leads into my next question. You are both seniors. What are y'all trying to do to be leaders, either on the field, in the locker room, in the classroom? What are y'all trying to do to help out the, the younger uh, members of the team? Um, I know, like, it's always been a thing for us captains, and it's been passed on. Like, you can always text us. You can always call us, like, no matter what. Like, we will always be there for you. Like, if you need to go to the field, you need to work on something, we're there. Like, if you need help in classrooms, like, text us, we're there. Like, it's just something like a support system for them. Like, if you have any questions, you can come to us. Like, don't be afraid just because we're upperclassmen. Like, we're always going to be there for you. And that's, like, kind of like the family mentality that we have. That's awesome. Yeah, we, and we don't want them to feel like, like she said, you know, we don't want them to be scared, like, just because we're upperclassmen and they're underclassmen, you know, it's a whole new environment for them and a whole new, you know, team to be working with, you know, it's high school ball, you know, it's going to be a lot harder than middle school. So we don't want them to ever feel like they're scared to talk to us if they have any problems, whether it's on or off the field, we want them to know that they can talk to us and they can, you know, tell us anything if they're struggling with something you know more than likely we've been through it too so we want to be there to help them 
through it. That's great. All right, we're running out of time. Rapid fire questions. Best <laughs> sports movie of all time. Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> best sports movie? Yeah. Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yes. Know. Remember the Titans. I don't know. Okay. Uh, funniest girl on the team. Haley. Haley Espinosa. Hey, Haley Espinosa. <laughs> Okay, that was a resounding answer for him. <laughs> yes. All right, last question. Uh, favorite athlete? Mia Hamm. <laughs> Alex Morgan. Oh, Alex Morgan, awesome. yeah. All right, very cool. All right, Coach Edwards, Abby Scalise, Jayla Reinhardt, thank you all so much for taking the time to speak with us today. We really appreciate it. We're all going to come out. We're going to make sure we support Bradley Girls Soccer. And uh, you, we're going to head back to the studio now, and I'm going to do my best to make sure I recorded this the right way and save it. <laughs> so thank y'all so much. Y'all have a great day. Thank, thank you. You too. Thank you. <laughs> you are watching the Southeast Tennessee Sports Show, presented by Check in the Cash and Hardee's. All right, welcome back to the Mix 104.1 Southeast Tennessee Sports Show. Brought to you by Hardy's and Checking the Cash. So before we wrap things up, I want to go ahead and give you a quick glimpse of our sports schedule for tonight and next week. Uh, tonight, Heritage will be hosting Cleveland. Meanwhile, Bradley Central will be hosting Udwa in a big region matchup. Walker Valley is back out on the field. Field they are taking on White County. Uh, Chattanooga Central is heading out to East Hamilton. Polk County is making the trip to Teleco Plains. Lenore City is hosting Ray County. Uh, Grace of Chattanooga is heading out to Middle Tennessee Christian for a big region matchup. McMinn County will be taking on William Blunt up in uh, Knox. And CAK will be coming down to Chattanooga to take on Silverdale for a big region matchup. So, uh, as always, thank you so much to our sponsors, Hardy's and Checking the Cash. Quick programming note. Uh, remember to catch all of our Friday Night Lights action right here on Mix 104.1. Talk 101.3 The Buzz and Fiesta 99.1. Tune in early for the pregame coverage and hang out late for the postgame interviews and wrap ups as always. Uh, remember, you can watch this show right here on the Mix 104.1 Facebook page, uh, the Mix 104.1 website, and of course the My Mix 104.1 app. We'll be back next Friday with more sports updates and exclusive interviews with our coaches and local athletes. A uh, big shout out to Coach Edwards and her players for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, thank you to our executive producer, Austin, Austin Chadwick, for making all this happen. And I am your host, Pat Benson. I'll see you next week.